Well, good morning once again. Here we are for uh, Outdoor King. My name's DJ and Joe's on camera. Uh, thanks again, Joe, for doing this for us. Uh, I've got a little problem with my Scott Bonner 45. And the particular problem we've got at the present time is in the cutter clutch assembly, which is here. If you have a look in uh, just down at the captive cotter pin here, you'll see that the captive cotter pin is not very captive. And in fact, it's protruding probably almost up to half an inch. So we need to go in and investigate what's happening inside here. And we're hoping that there's not going to be any damage to the engine shaft. Now, to do this, we need to remove the engine. Uh, some of you will need to do this uh, when you're restoring your, your Scott Bonners. It's a very simple procedure. Now, before we start, just some simple safety things. We might make sure that the, the on-off switch is in the off position and we will remove the spark plug lead and uh, just tuck it out of the way, hopefully so that it's not going to be uh, in the road and not going to, more importantly, contact the plug again. Okay, now to do that we need to remove the, the throttle lever arm which is on the handlebars. This one you'll realise is not an original one. It's uh, actually off, a, off an early Victor, but it, uh, it, it does the job and suits uh, this particular engine configuration very well. So we're going to remove that initially and then we're going to undo the four bolts here. We're going to knock this captive cotter back into position, which hopefully will release it from the shaft. Using a hide face hammer, and uh, we will undo that. Right out. So the first thing I will do is I will crack these nuts. These are half inch SAE. the nuts you'll notice also on the nuts there is a spring washer and a flat washer which is quite important you want these to be nice and tight down on the twin rails you will also see on the site that there is a couple of threads there about the rails cracking and cracking is caused by vibration so it is always very wise when you're doing routine maintenance just to to check these particular four nuts that hold the, the engine to the frame, make sure they're nice and tight. Right now we want to put these in a safe place so that we can uh, not lose them. Okay, what we need now is a common screwdriver and we will remove the throttle lever which is just held on by a clamp. Now it's always a good idea to put the screws back in so that you uh, don't have to go looking for them later. There's just a clip in the back here. Right, now having uh, removed the throttle assembly and, uh, and removed the clips for the throttle cable, the next thing we have to do is loosen the nut on this captive collar and knock it down as far as it will go. That should release it from the shaft, providing that it's actually attached to the shaft, which we won't know until we have the, uh, the engine removed. So it's just a matter of undoing this nut. This is 916 SAE. Okay, so the nut is uh, approximately uh, level with the, the top of the threaded section of the cotter pin 
and what we want to do now is knock it down in that direction which should hopefully release it from the shaft. Right on, now with a bit of luck, the little engine should slide off. See it's exposed to key way of the woodlove key there. And there we go. Looking at the shaft, you can see a keyway. There's a 14mm threaded hole there. And uh, I think you will agree that the end of the shaft looks quite good. If you just bear with me a little minute, I'll just clean it up. And we can see. I'm pulling it over that there doesn't appear to be any damage and in fact if you look here you can see a little indentation where I think the actual captive cotter is actually uh, been catching. There's no flat on this shaft so obviously the captive cotter does has to. Now these are two spaces that uh, when I first uh, put this engine back on the mower, I, uh, I put these on to stop the, the whole clutch assembly moving left, which would mean that at least it gave it something to, to, uh, to press on. Uh, there's a, a collar on the inside here, and uh, they worked very successfully uh, when I was adjusting the clutch out. Obviously, if the captive cotter is working, it shouldn't require those. But uh, as it was never ever very successful with this particular uh, mower, I, I used the two washers. Right oh. Now, with a little bit of luck, this should just slide off as a complete assembly. Leaving the shaft with a wood rough key. And of course your plastic uh, thrust cap here, that's the one that a lot of our members are having problems with, guys. If this whole assembly is pressing on the, uh, on the actual end of the, the shaft here, you, you will have problems. It will melt this little piece of plastic. It is available in the online store, by the way. For anyone that needs a new one, easy replaceable. Okay, well we're going to pause here and uh, now we're going to pull this clutch half apart and see what's going on inside there. Right, oh, no, well here we are, the Carter clutch, Scott Bonner, model 45. It's uh, played ball with us and came, came off very easily. Now we're going to split it in half and uh, we're going to take a few measurements so just bear with me and it's just a matter of uh, a screwdriver and a spanner now these here are very very easy to uh, to remove matter of fact that these this is another area that you have to make sure that these don't come undone vibration uh, is the uh, the biggest problem 
with, with these particular nuts and if they if you do find they come apart one of these drops on the lawn they will ruin your reel very very easily when it, just a nut that size what I will be doing I will be replacing uh, these screws and nuts uh, see we're pulling it down and uh, I'll be using nylocks so that I don't have that problem in future is a spring uh, they are also available as a spare part if they lose their tension and this is the part of the cutter clutch that I'm glad I've got a part that I can actually show you right it sits on the mower thus right now to release the clutch the clutch cone moves in now it doesn't have to move in far what you can see is there's the, the clutch cork, right, which is in very good condition. This is the part of the cone that I've posted on the site if you're restoring. Do not paint that inner surface area because that's a bit like the inside of a brake drum. It has to create a friction grip on the cork and, and send the, uh, the clutch in, in, in motion. All that looks in, in good condition. This is your thrust bearing. Uh, surprisingly, they, they don't have any sort of lubrication inside them, but they, they work very, very well. And that's the, the clutch half. So what Joe and I are going to have to do now is take a few measurements and make sure that uh, since we changed the, uh, the engine over from a Briggs to a Honda, that the shaft diameter is correct for this inner clutch half. So we'll take a few measurements. Rightio, here we are back again. Well, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, we sure have, uh, we've got a picture in front of us here. This is the, uh, the clutch half, uh, less the thrust bearing. The thrust bearing just slides out from this section. And uh, we've removed the cotter pin by knocking it down and then uh, releasing it and if you can see this end of the cotter pin here is completely gone so in other words it's just supposed to be a neat half moon sh shape that diameter on that end with the half moon completely worn so no wonder she's come out it hasn't been locating on the shaft also this is the, the key that, that fits inside here, that, that, that keys this to uh, the engine shaft. You can see that that's got a little piece out of the end of it as well here. So that needs to be replaced. That needs to be replaced. The spring is intact, plenty of tension, but this clutch half, if you, we slide it on the engine thus you can see that it's got heaps of play that is supposed to be 5 eighths this shaft we've measured with the vernier is 5 eighths the inside of that has been worn giving us this play that needs to be replaced so we're off to the Outdoor King store to uh, source some new parts and, uh, and then we'll put it back together with a new collar pin and also I'll be getting three new screws rather than just the normal nuts and the spring washers we will be going for nylocks which will be a much better deal. Also do a little bit of painting while I'm at it and uh, have it all back together again very very shortly by the way we measured the uh, the engine shaft here 
the engine shaft here is actually three quarters. So the 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 engine, the uh, Honda engine that fits here, has uh, basically got a, a five eight shaft. This one's three quarters at the other end. So I'm DJ for Outdoor King, Joe on camera. We'd like to thank you very much indeed, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.